Hey everybody, this is Ian Lurie from conversationmarketing.com. Uh, you've probably been here before, but I'll just let you know that uh, I'm recording this right now because I am completely flummoxed as to what to record for a different training session I'm supposed to do. I've got all my equipment set up, so I figured I should do a Google Analytics tutorial because it's what I do when I have nothing else to do. Um, I wanted to talk about the basic statistics that you need to look at in Google Analytics. and Two or three years ago, I did a session just like this, and you'll find it, it's out there on video, but Google Analytics has changed a lot. So I'm re-recording this looking at different stats, looking at the different interface, looking at some of the things you can do in Google Analytics with the new system. It's not that new at this point, but better late than never. Uh, so what you're looking at right now is the dashboard for conversationmarketing.com, and you can see some basic data here. But the truth is, the data that's here, it'll give you a general idea of what's going on, but it doesn't really get into the kind of depth that you're going to need, uh, even if you're doing the most basic analysis. So here's the things that I personally look at. When I first go into Google Analytics, I'm going to look under Visitors. But I'm actually going to go to Visitor Trending and then Absolute Unique Visitors. And the reason I do that is because I want to see how many individual people have come to my site within whatever the time period is. In this case, it's the last 30 days. A unique visitor is any one person coming to your website any number of times in that time span. So if Ian Lurie comes to Conversation Marketing 50 times in this month, I still count as only one unique visitor. It's really important because you want to know whether you're getting more visits out of the same visitors or you're getting more new visitors. Uh, both are good. It's important to know though what, what's happening because you can always adjust your strategy around that. So I'm certainly going to look at that. I'm also probably going to look at average page views, which is the number of pages people look at when they come to my site. Um, I do a rather ghastly 1.54 pages per visit. I, I hope, I think, it's because uh, people, a lot of people who read my blog read it from an RSS feed or they read it from a, a tweet that I send out. So they click to the site, they read the latest article, and then they're gone. It's fine. You're not hurting my feelings, I swear, honest. Um, I also look at average time on site, a minute and 21 seconds. Um, again. You know, it's not terrific. I hope there's a good reason for it. But uh, and then I look at bounce rate, and ye god, 73% of the people who come to my site bounce. A bounce is when someone comes to my site, looks at a page, and leaves without clicking on any other links or even spending any significant amount of time, whatever that amount of time might be, on the page. Um, and again, in this case, actually, a 73% bounce rate is probably okay because so many people come to my site from a feed or something like that. So that's the basic data and me justifying my existence and hopefully not being quite as lame as it looks. Um, then I'm actually going to take a look under some new stuff. Now there's a couple new things you can measure using Google Analytics. My favorite is mobile devices and carriers. You can look at what mobile devices are generating traffic to your site. So in this example you can see I'm getting traffic from both the iPhone and the iPad, which makes me feel very current and up to date. It's very cool. Of course there's a million iPads in the country and I've gotten 91 visits from them. That's a little depressing, but it's okay. It's all right. Um, seriously, this is very useful data, okay, because I now know whether I should start thinking about adjusting my site uh, to have maybe a separate mobile version or maybe I should actually start writing content about mobile marketing. It might actually be time. Uh, and, and this is another new feature in Google Analytics, and you'll find this on almost every screen, I can then cut across this data by another dimension. I can actually say now I can look at it by mobile operating system and search keyword and you'll see this in a second, what this shows me is it shows me the keywords that people on iPhones, for example, are using to find me. Social media expert, internet marketing plan book. Those are great insights into what people on iPhones are using to find me because those are very different from the search terms that people are using to find me on other platforms. And I'll show you that in a minute. The next thing I want to look at is where my traffic is coming from. And I usually start with all traffic sources, which is a good summary. So you can see here, Google uh, Direct is typically someone just typing in www.conversationmarketing.com and coming straight to my site. Uh, stumble upon, you can just look and see what all of these are. It's always good to see this. It tells you what efforts of yours are working, what efforts may not be. Um, if someone out there has suddenly started talking about you and you didn't know it, uh, in the blogging world, it's always considered to be good form to link back eventually to people who have cited you on their blog. So I look here to make sure that I know who has cited me, and then I make sure I go and I link back to them eventually. I'm not going to do it right now, but eventually I'm going to make sure that I can you know, kind of 
pay it back as well as forward. Uh, so you can see here, for example, you know, cracked.com once linked to me, inline SEO. I'm going to take note of all these and keep track. Um, I'm also going to look at keywords. What are people searching for in the aggregate, you know, just of all browsers? And I'll click non-paid in this case, but I don't do any paid search marketing on my blog. I depend on all you nice people to drive traffic to me. Um, but you can see what people search for when they find me. Uh, and lo and behold, the number one is Google Analytics tutorial, which is funny because I do talk about Google Analytics a lot, but actually I talk a lot more about stuff like SEO and things like that. But this is a good niche term, and I do happen to have a good ranking for it. It generates a lot of traffic. And again, if you look at this secondary dimension here, I can then change this to source, which would show me which search engines are generating this traffic. So that kind of at my fingertips, and you'll notice, yeah, you know, Google controls the world, and so there you have it. Um, but you'll notice that now I know this is coming from Google. I must have a decent ranking on Google for this term. I should go take a look at that. Um, I can also cut across this another way. I can look at it um, by connection speed or operating system. You know, if you ever have someone who's coming to you and saying, you know, we need to keep our website down to 400 pixels across because a lot of our users are using monitors that are really small. Well, you can go and look in your stats in Google Analytics and say, well, actually, you know, the, most people using our, our website are at really high resolution, so why don't we go with that instead? Uh, they'll probably still make you use this lower resolution because nobody likes being corrected, but at least you can feel better about it. Man, I'm much more, I'm even more sarcastic than usual today. I apologize. Anyway, uh, the last thing I'm going to look at just for my baseline is the top content report. So if you take a look here, I'm just looking at what content is, is the most popular on my site. And this actually shows something really interesting. First of all, notice I do get a lot of deep navigation to my site. My home page is the most popular, but only by a little tiny fraction, you know, 4,662 versus 4,608 page views. Um, that tells you there's a lot of people clicking directly to articles. They're not going to my home page and then clicking in. Um, the other interesting thing is, you know, this second article, the SEO checklist, is relatively new. It's about a month old. But this next one, 22 things you don't know about your customers, that's an old article. That's from August, last August. Um, and it tells you that there's been a lot of, that this content has a lot of staying power. And it's just really interesting to see that because it tells me that I should write more articles like that if that is still generating traffic at this point. So that's it. That's the basic kinds of data that I'm going to look at next time I do this. Uh, hopefully it will be before I'm stumped again as to what to do for a training session. But next time I do this, um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, the intelligence system that's now built into Google Analytics, and then I'll go on to custom reports and advanced segments and fun stuff like that. Thanks. I hope this is helpful. Uh, leave a comment below if you want to see something else, if you have a specific question, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.